people. We're ready to begin lesson 2-2. Two, two. We're going to discuss fractions and decimals. So what we'll be doing is taking and writing uh, fractions to decimals and we're going to write decimals to fractions. I want you to know right up front that it is okay for you to use your calculator. I don't want you to spend your time doing any kind of long division. I want you to focus on the process and knowing which, one, which number to divide by which number rather than focusing on spending all your time doing the division. So if you don't have your calculator out, pause the video and get your calculator now. Okay, so fractions and decimals are different ways to show the same value. So notice we've got two of the five blocks colored and uh, we are told that it's equal to four tenths. Now here's another thing I want you to do. When you're getting, whenever you're reading a fraction, I want you to read it correctly. I don't want to see 0 0.4. This one is four tenths. So four out of the ten blocks are colored. So you see why it's important to understand what this number represents? Okay, but they both represent the same amount shaded, don't they? It's, the only thing is on the decimal, it's just divided into more blocks. So to move a fraction to a decimal, we need to divide the numerator. Now, do you know which number's the numerator? Did you think in your mind it's the number on the top? Very good and we're going to divide it by the denominator which whatever's left it must be the number on the bottom the denominator so the 2 is the numerator the 5 is the denominator okay don't you just love those words I love math words they just roll off the tongue alright so to change a fraction to a decimal you divide the numerator by the denominator and then to change a decimal to a fraction well the, we're going to write the decimal as a fraction with a denominator that is a multiple of 10 so you notice how we read four tenths so that's why it was important to know how to read that because it's the same thing as four over ten but we can't leave it like that because we need to simplify it by finding the greatest common factor now if you remember correctly the greatest common factor is the largest number that goes into both of these numbers so notice they're both even and four is not a very big number so the only thing that goes into four is one and four and two and two. Well, one, one doesn't count. That's not a greatest common factor. We need something larger than one because one is common to all of them. Four won't go into it, so we know that they're both divisible by two over two. Well, four divided by two is two. Ten divided by two is fifth or five. Wow, isn't that fantastic? We got the same answer, so we did something right here. So, and so you can always go back and check your work to, to if you find it easier to think one way but not the other, then work it in reverse. If you use a calculator, you need to know the division problem so that you can enter the digits in the calculator correctly. So what are they talking about here? Well, first of all, we're asked to write one-eighth as a decimal. Okay, so first of all, we need to figure out which one's the numerator. Okay, one and the denominator is 8. Well, see this fraction bar? You know, a lot of times we, sh we think of this as divided by 1 divided by 8. That's what a fraction bar means. 1 divided by 8. So if you forget which direction to go, just start at the top and work your way down. 1 divided by 8. So in your calculator, you're going to put in a 1, enter the division key, 8 equals. Ooh, so here's our number. How would you read that? That's tens hundreds, thousandths. So a hundred and twenty-five thousandths is how we'd rewrite that one. Okay, now it's your turn. I want you to pause the video. I want you to rewrite 13 over 25 as a decimal, okay? All right, so we can rewrite the fraction as a division problem, 13 divided by 25. So use your calculator, what do you get? So we'd enter a 1, 3, divided by 2, 5, equals, did you get 52 hundredths? So it should look like a 0 0.52, 52 hundredths. Excellent job. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's look at another example. Here we're doing the same thing, but they're doing the division. They're writing it as a division problem. Now, that's important to know, okay, which one goes in the house? Remember that one from elementary school? 
but again I'm not going to ask you to do the step-by-step -step work we're going to skip that part I want you to know 3 divided by 8 okay is 375 thousandths so your turn read the problem I want you to pause the video and then tell me what's the division problem and then what do you get for an answer I'm interested in this part right here okay did you get 28 on the outside and in the house was a 7 or 7 divided by 28 right you get 25 hundredths 0. Point, oh I'm sorry yeah 0 0.25 0 0.25 okay very good let's move on to example 3 we're gonna kick it up a notch we are to write how do we read this there's one that's tens hundreds thousands so thirty six thousandths as a fraction in simplest form so we counted the number of decimal places whenever I'm doing it I just I start counting starting at the decimal I know that's the tenths hundredths thousandths and that way I, I already know what number now because there's three decimal places you know you're gonna have three zeros behind so if you're not good at the tenths hundredths thousandths thing you can also know that whatever you're going to uh, your multiple of 10 is going to have the same number of zeros as you have decimal places. The numerator is 36, so we can rewrite that fraction as 36 over 1,000. Now, we know that we need to simplify. First of all, the easiest thing to see is that both of them are even, so we know we've got to have something come out of both of them. It's, it's good if you know the greatest common factor, 4 over 4, but would you still get there if you took 2 over 2 and then saw you still needed to simplify and do 2 over 2 again? Yes, you would. So you don't have to be perfect on this step every time. I want you to look for a pattern and start there. That's the most important thing I see is that you look for that pattern and start dividing. You see that you need to simplify. So. Uh, and, the, and another thing to remember is whatever you divide the numerator by, the exact same number, you have to divide the denominator by. Because if you divide by 1, it doesn't change it, does it? 4 over 4 is the same thing as 1. So that's why it has to be the same number in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so I want you to pause the video, and I want you to solve this problem. When you've get, got all the um, blanks filled in, then start it again, and we'll check your answer. Okay, so what is the multiple of 10 that we're going to use? How many zeros do we have, or decimal places? There are two, so we're going to have two zeros. A 1 and two zeros make a 100. Did you get that the numerator is going to be 85? Very good. So our fraction, 85 over 100. So now we're going to simplify that, 85 over 100. What number goes into both 85 and 100? Well, you notice they end in a 5 and a 0, so you know 5 is going to go into both of them. So you divide it by 5 over 5, and our answer is 17 over 20. Very good. Let's move forward. Time to do a little guided practice. Now I'm going to let you use your calculator on these three. So pause the video. You work these problems. Just write your answer right here. You see where I'm highlighting? That's where you're going to write your answer, and then uh, come back and check to see your answer is correct. Okay, using a calculator, what is 33 divided by 50? Did you get 0 0.66? Now, whenever you're writing it like this, it's very important that you keep, keep your decimal points lined up. So this should be a 0 over this 3.66. Okay, so over here. Our decimal place goes here. 5 won't go into 2, but 5 will go into 20 four times. So we'll have a 0 0.4. Do you know why we write a 0 in front of the decimal place whenever we write that? I just thought about that. Well, the, the reason why we put that 0 is because it says, oh, wait a minute, there's something coming after me. Because if you didn't put that 0 first, a lot of times you'd miss that little decimal point in front of the 4. So that's why it's always important. Don't write just point 0.4, it's 0 0.4. So you know, oh, pay attention, there's something coming after me. All right, number 3. We're going to put a 0 right here because 32 won't go into 20. 
and our decimal places are going to line up and the numbers here will be a six a two and a five very good the last one we're going to have a zero here because 25 won't go into 21 put our decimal place and on top we're going to have an eight and then a four so zero point eight four very good okay time for a step-by-step -step practice I'm going to let you pause the video again and work this out I will come back and we'll go over the answers before we move forward all right so did you get in step one that the multiple in the denominator is going to be a 100 good two decimal places a 100 here what is that numerator well there's a 72 up there isn't there so 72 is going to be our numerator so when we write the fraction it's going to be 72 divided by 100 now I want you to write that as 72 over or use the fraction bar 100 I don't want you to use the divided by sign so if you did that I want you to fix that very quickly now we're going to simplify it we've got 72 and 100 and what numbers go into both 72 and 100 did you get 4 so we'll put a 4 over 4 it's going to equal 18 over 25 okay very good a little bit more practice for you I want you to work problem 6 through 9 you can pause the video and then come back and we'll check your answers okay so did you get 2 over 100 that's you write your fraction 2 over 100 so 2 over 100 divided by 2 over 2 is 1 over 50 very good our fraction here is going to be 375 over 1000 so we're going to write 375 and 1000 divided by oh big numbers 125 over 125 wow which is equal to 3 over 8 okay on number 8 our fraction is 16 over 100 so 16 over 100 we'll divide that by 4 over 4 and that's going to equal 4 over 25 right number 9 we'll write this fraction as 5 over 1000 wow so 5 over 1000 will be divided by 5 over 5 and it was going to equal 1 over 200 excellent okay this is our last one we're working together I want you to pause the video I want you to work out this problem um, if you need to write down so you can underline or just write down the key words that are in this this problem and we're going to come back and discuss it in just a moment okay you can check your answers here um, now I want you to look at this does does your answer make sense the answer that we got Luke's making 45 percent of his free throws is that a reasonable answer is it possible that he would make uh, 45 percent of his three free throws well I would say that that answer is reasonable right what what if your fraction was greater than one instead of 9 over 20 it was 20 over 9 would that make sense no it wouldn't because when you change it to a percentage that means he's making more than a hundred percent of what he tried to shoot so that's important when you're looking at your um, solution that ask yourself does that make sense would you say what would you say about Luke's basketball abilities based on his free throw average now if, if you were choosing players for the school team would Luke be a valuable player shooting at 45 percent so less than half of the time you could count on him to make his free throw so if you were in a game winning situation would you want to put him on the line would you want him to be the one that's shooting that final shot to determine whether you're going to win or lose many employers including coaches determine the skills of their employees based on statistics just just like this example so in the next lesson you're going to learn how to write decimals as a percent and a percent as a decimal so you can see how those they come up with those statistics okay time for you to start working the skills concepts and practice